Hello everybody, welcome to Croydon Visions Facebook Live event and I hope you enjoyed last week's event uh, with Michael Spooner all about his journey as a blind entrepreneur and uh, how he sort of helps um, people get into work. And this week we have with us uh, Karen Underwood from the Croydon Sensory Team. Welcome Karen! Welcome Adette, thanks Adette. Yes, and uh, we're going to talk today about mobility, about walking around and travelling around Croydon and beyond. So please do send in your comments, your questions, and um, I hope you enjoy our session. So uh, Karen, um, first of all maybe uh, Let's think about, you, you work at the, the, with the sensory team in Croydon and how, how can you support people with their mobility? What, what, what do you do? Okay, well the sensory impairment team in Croydon, there is approximately five of us that work for it and we're what you call rehabilitation officers and quite often we support people in identifying a cane that might be suitable for them, a mm -hmm. white cane, that so, could be simple so, cane, guide cane or long cane. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, we offer them training to use that cane. So we will make sure um, before you go outdoors that you've got the basic technique for using the cane safely and you've got the confidence to do so. And then we'll teach you routes that you may need to, to know. It might be a route to the shop, um, local shops. It may be um, a route to work. Yeah. Anything really that you use often. And that's really um, the role, um, part of the role of the okay. impairment team. Thank you, Karen. I must say that for myself, Greg taught me uh, the route from my home to, to work. And at that time, I was working in Balham, and I must say that I wasn't quite sure what I was going to learn. And um, I think one of the most useful um, skill I, I learned was doing stairs, how to feel with my cane the, the last stair, or the first stair, and uh, escalators, that was another one, you know, how, how you get on and off escalators. That's been super useful for me. And uh, yes, do you think and so how long how long does it take for somebody to to learn a route? Well, it depends. It, it's like everything. It depends on the length of the route. Yeah, the individual person, their level of confidence and the level of sight. Yeah, and the type of care that they're using. Yeah, um, you know, some, some people they do it in one go. Some right. people need um, a lot longer, it might yes. be six to eight sessions. Yeah. It really, really does depend on, um, as I say, a number of yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's really good. I wanted to say also that I, I found it um, quite difficult at first to, to have the confidence to go out in public using a white cane. It made me feel, you know, really uh, self-conscious and uh, a bit strange, a bit peculiar. I thought everybody was looking at me. How, how do you sort of help people to overcome uh, that feeling? It's a difficult one. Yeah. Um, I think it's just reassuring. And I think what helps people to overcome it is their experiences once they start using it. Yeah. Um, you know, in fairness, I think for a lot of people, it gets to a point where if they're having a number of little small accidents, yes. they'll actually maybe I'll pay for using a cane. Yes. I've heard lots of people say, once I start using it, my goodness, why wasn't I using it for a number of years? It's, it's changed, changed my life. Um, you know, I myself, um, like you, Odette, are officially impaired. Yes. And um, when my sight has deteriorated over the years, and when I first started um, living and working in Croydon, I was using no mobility aid. Um, right. I was traveling independently. Yeah. Um, then it got to a point where it
it was actually my young daughter who said to me, oh, mum, you know, you keep having these accidents. People don't realise you can't see so well. Yeah. Can you use a cane? Yeah. And I started to use a gu- guide cane. Um, and then from that, I went on to using a long cane. And then eventually now I'm a guide dog user. Yeah. Oh, that, 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 brings, on, that brings us very well to the, to the next thing is that obviously uh, people do know that blind people use dogs as well. So I was thinking it'd be quite interesting to go through the different aids that people use, um, you know, if you can't see so well, traveling around. So we talked about the cane. So what about a guide dog? So, so what, what does it mean to have, what, what, what can the dog do really? What does a guide dog do? Okay. Well, the guide dog obviously supports you in, in, in guiding. Where it works differently, towards the cane is it will avoid obstacles yeah and quite often when we're using a cane especially a long cane and um, obviously a symbol cane is slightly different but especially a long cane we we quite often are looking for landmarks with the cane to support us so we know where we are yeah. and it will avoid you hitting the obstacle yeah um but it will help you to identify curb edges and things like that. Right. The difference with the dog is it will avoid it will avoid any obstacles and take you directly to the curb edge. Right. But you still need to know where you're going. It's not that the dog knows where they're going. <laughs> you know, they, do, they do get a little bit canny and used to that. You still need to know the route that, that you're yeah. travelling. Yeah, I, I think that's maybe one thing people don't realise is that they think the dog will know where to go, but actually the dog really can't read the map. <laughs> I can't tell you no, where to go. Can't. Can't. And, <laughs> and do you do you it take your dog? Sorry, Dan? Karen, do you take your dog like on the train and do you take your dog when you go on holiday? Does the dog, I mean, how far can you go with a dog, so to speak? Well, I, I've been everywhere with Ruby on every form of transport. Um, she has travelled, um, I live in the tram line, so she's travelled by tram, yeah. bus, train. Yeah. Um, she's travelled um, by um, ferry and um, boat. Wow! <laughs> to, um, and she's tra- overnight, overnight, and yeah. she's also travelled by aeroplane. Wow! Um, really? So, th- does so, she have a passport? No, she doesn't have a passport. <laughs> but, but the rules have recently changed. Yes. Uh, um, I I was flying lots to Northern Ireland, which was still in the UK. Yes. And to be fair, I wouldn't, if I was going abroad um, to another country, yeah. I wouldn't take Ruby with me, simply because, you know, it was for a short period of time. Yeah. It would have been unfamiliar routes and unfamiliar surroundings. Yeah. And so um, when I went abroad, I didn't take her. Now with... Brexit, um, the rules have changed. Um, at the moment, assistance dogs do not have permission to travel um, without documentation to I Northern know. Ireland. And, and it's changed also. No longer is a pet passport valid within the EU. You have to apply for a special certificate right. called an AHPA certificate which is only valid for three months and oh, wow. gives you 10 days away. And, and you can only get it three days before traveling and it costs £140. Oh, my God. So, so Karen, when you talk so, about assistant dogs, do you mean like even like the hearing dogs and any dog? That... Yeah. 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 Any assistance dog um, doesn't have the right now oh, um, right. to travel to yeah. the EU. You with like this APHS oh, wow. AHPA certificate. Yeah. So um, it's, um, they are working on it to change it, but I think unfortunately there's bigger bigger problems with yeah. with Brexit at the moment. Yeah. Than yeah. assistance dogs. So so Kevin, I think Ola was saying that we might have some questions or comments. Ola. Um, we have a member that says okay. uh, she doesn't have a guide dog, but uh, her dog knows what bus she needs and uh, what <laughs> shop she goes to now. Uh, 
probably her dog her dog knows always goes the same so the yeah. dogs so Karen do the dogs then learn your roots anyways Yes, they do. And to be fair, I suppose the difference for the guide dog is that you have a special harness um, for the dog yeah. that um, gives, gives a little bit more where you're, you're a little bit further back from the dog. So um, a little bit more support in that way. And I suppose the biggest difference is that the guide dog is allowed to come into the shop with you. Ah, so yes. That's, that's the benefit. It, was, it doesn't have to wait outside. I know some shopkeepers and some um, businesses are very dog friendly, but obviously it is that that is their, down to their, um, you know, preference. Yes. But obviously yeah. in, in law. Through the um, Equalities Act, a guide dog it is allowed to enter um, all shops. And um, and I suppose and also also like restaurants and hotels, uh, yeah. the guide dog is yeah. allowed to go. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. She, they, they are. You know, Ruby stayed with me in in many a, a hotel um and she, restaurants that's that's my party trick she um will appear from under the table uh, <laughs> after you know after being there for a little people aren't even aware that she, yes she's there yeah yeah oh that's that's really nice so so kevin but, we've spoken but, we've spoken about the cane about the guide dog so what what other things can can people use uh, to, to, to walk around, to, if you can't see so well, what, what other things maybe can people use? Okay, well, you know, obviously through the LPA clinic, a lot of people um, can use monoculars yes. to support them with seeing bus numbers or yeah. reading the uh, boards at stations, um, that type of thing, street signs and stuff. Yeah. So quite often a monocular, depending on your eye condition, can help there. Um, obviously, with the advancement of technology, um, a lot of people now use their um, their phones for um, yeah. GPS on, 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 on their smartphones. Yeah, you can... Um, you can... That, that, that's yeah. really nice. Yeah, the GPS on your smartphone. Yes. And, and do you... Yes, there's... Do you, do you, as a rehabilitation officer, Kevin, would you show that to somebody, how, how to sort of uh, use their GPS on their mobile phone? Yeah, of course yeah. we would. Ah, fantastic. Um, obviously, there's, there's a lot of free apps out there, um, and then there's some that you have to, you have to pay, pay for. Um, I think, in fairness, though, um, Adette, that probably could be a whole... Session, session on itself on its own. yeah yes yeah yes, there's so many stuff out there that's that's useful and um, it probably could be a whole session on its own yes yeah yeah well um and, and i suppose then the, the the other thing that that we have not mentioned is that is using a person a guide whether it's a personal assistant or a member of your family yeah. or, or husband or wife to 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 guide you now um would would you would you uh, uh, train? Would you offer also training for if you had somebody of your family that would need to guide you? Because obviously they they might not know. Yeah, of course we can. Um, yeah, R and I B have um, a fantastic booklet on sided guide that sort of demonstrates to family members um, how to guide their their loved yeah. one um, and suggestions around it. But we, we as rehabilitation officers can also support there um, and provide um, people with guidance and training on that because, um, it, you know, it can be um, a big thing and yeah. passing through doorways and stuff, um, you know, there is techniques for that. Exactly. Or for going up and down stairs, finding the top step, those type yes. of things. So, yeah. um, of course, you can show people how to do that too. Now that, that that's really good to know. So so we have a if I quick recap. We have the canes, the guide dog, the GPS. 
We can also use monoculars or binoculars to, to see signs and numbers. And then we have uh, people that we can uh, be, guided, be guided with. So that's, that's quite a lot. And I think that it's really good to try and use a combination of all of those. I mean, I, I, I'm not a guide dog user, but I yeah. certainly use my monocular. I use my cane. And I wanted to show that in my rucksack here, on one side I have, in the little side, pocket I have my umbrella and on the other side I have my cane my long cane and I don't need it all the time but when I need it I really need it and it might be you know crossing or crossing I don't know going in places I'm not sure about or if the sun is in my eyes or if you know if there's a lot a lot of people traveling different you know crossing different stations um, so my cane is always there that I know I can take it out and, and use it and it's become part of my uh, things that go in my bag really <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then the other thing that a lot of people also um, can find helpful, sometimes helpful depending on the eye condition, is filter glasses. Oh, or yes. Glasses. Yeah. Yes. Um, glasses. So that, yeah, so filter glasses can en enhance the um, residual remaining vision you have. Yeah, it cuts um, off the glare. Yeah. yeah, we. I think we have a few comments. Ola, do you want to? Uh, uh, just a, I think a couple of questions and a comment. Okay. Um, I have a question saying, um, who should you contact if a shop doesn't allow your guide dog in? And uh, someone also asked, um, how uh, on average, how many times in a year does Ruby see the vet? And then someone else was saying something about having a lot of issues with taxi drivers and guides in London. Karen, did you hear okay. that? Well, um, well, yeah, I, I think I did. If, if I start with the guide dog, um, it's really, obviously, if someone doesn't let you in into um, a business or a shop without a guide dog, I'd say the clue is to contact guide dogs. Um, because they can support you in working with that business to um, try and um, give them training, really, and, and yeah. support. So it's in a positive way rather than a negative way. Um, and guide dogs will do that on your behalf. Obviously, if, um, you know, they are being particularly difficult and are breaking the law, you can take them to court um, and um, RNIB and guide dogs will help you do that um, to, to obviously. Yeah. Okay. That's the last resort. Yeah. And, and, and what about the question about going to the vet? How, how, how does it work if you have a guide dog? Uh, do, do you have to pay? Okay. No, you don't. Guide dogs are fantastic um, as an organisation in some ways. Um, not always, but the one thing they will do is look after the dog from birth to death. Right. And as an owner of a guide dog, they will um, pay for the guide dog's food. Yeah. Um, they will pay for the guide dog's vet bills. And yeah. they will pay for all their injections and their medication. And you have um, a little health book that you take with you to the vet that they fill in. And realistically, um, for their, their health checks, that's twice a year. Um, they get, get obviously their booster injection once a year, but obviously you have to upkeep their, um, their flea treatment and their worming treatment. So yeah. Yeah, you, you, you go twice a year to the vet. Um, but guide dogs pay for everything. Ah, oh, that is that is really good. Um, now you'll have to. It is now you'll have to give me the third question again. The third question. It was the vet. It was uh, we had about the the shop. Oh yes, taxi drivers. It was that. Um, so so some taxi drivers in London don't really like you to go into their car with with a dog. Yes, and and you know that I have, I have had those those difficulties. Yeah, you know, always when I book a taxi, 
pay um, a private taxi. I do have a taxi card as well, but we'll get there. Yeah. I will inform the controller that I have, that I will be travelling with the guide dog. Yeah. Um, now, they shouldn't refuse you to, to, take, to, to take a guide dog. Um, that is against the law. It's against the Equalities Act. But again, not all drivers are aware of that. Now, I've had some situations where um, they've had to get in touch with their controller and yeah. the controller has told them you have to take it. Yeah. Um, I've, obviously, lots of people have had situations where they've refused. Um, obviously, people like the BBC with um, Guide Dogs Association and stuff have done a lot of work on that in trying to point that out. But again, you can report that to the local authority licensing because um, a driver's li um, a taxi driver's license may be removed Ooh, yeah. if they are refusing oh, yeah. to take guide dogs. Now, they can get an exemption certificate because obviously some people are allergic to dogs, but they have to have a medical, a medical reason. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, medical reason and that has to be got through the through through their GP. Yeah. Well would you recommend when booking a taxi to actually mention and by the way I have a guide dog? Yeah. I, I will I will always let them know that because at the end of the day I don't want to be yes. in confrontation. Exactly. I want a I want a taxi driver that turns up yeah. that has a little bit of sight loss awareness and, and is friendly towards my dog. There's yes. nothing more awkward than someone coming and you having to argue with them exactly. and then still get into that taxi. Yeah. So I'll always let them know. Um, yeah. You know, sometimes it's just a little bit of education. Not everyone um, is is aware of of what a guide dog is. Yeah. Um, and... and basically um about you know the yeah. the equalities act and the transport act yeah. so you know it, it is just just you know i'm never um i, I always try the educational route and the friendly route first yes. um, before getting getting a little bit disgruntled yeah. and, and do you think that taxi drivers have become better than they used to uh, do you think that, that it's improving um, is it? Yeah. It's just hard oh, to say. Just, uh, it's hard to say. It's yeah, hard to say. Yeah. Um, I've had positive experiences, but I've had negative experiences. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've never got to a situation because I do warn them beforehand where I, um, my yes. book has been completely refused. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, you know, once I had a driver turn up and I said, he, he, he basically jumped back into his taxi, closed the door, wasn't even talking to <laughs> oh, me. <no. laughs> and then he opened yeah. the door and said, oh, oh, my controller says that I have to take you. Yeah. And I said, but I, I let them know. Yes. Yeah. It did say guide dog on it. I didn't know what a guide dog was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know. Yeah. It's. But he was fine afterwards, and um, you know, I just went through with him about about guide dogs, yes. really, and how yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, very good. Now, moving on, we also wanted to maybe, Karen, if you could let our, our listeners know about, so what, what other support do disabled and blind people might have for just transport in general around Croydon and around yes. London? Yes. Uh, before we, well, move, uh, on, before um, we move on, before we move on, yeah. Quickly, just um, a question about how long did it take you to form Unism with Ruby? So it's still like a... Sorry. Uh, amount of time that it take before you and uh, how long did it take does it take to form Sorry, together in unison with ruby how, how long does it take you to kind of um a bond with your dog and get to 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 feel you can just go out with your dog oh, and, you and, and you work together ruby, yeah, ruby's my second dog um and my my first dog angie i trained at a center my second dog ruby i trained at home to be honest, the bond was for both was very quick. You know, they're looking for a dog that suits your personality. And yeah. the thing is, they're choosing dogs that they know will respond well and want yeah. to work and are happy to work. 
Um, so personality wise, um, it, you know, I wouldn't say it was immediate because, you know, it's new for everyone. Yeah. But it, the bonding was very quick. Okay, thank you. Okay, so moving on, Karen. So what um, what can we, what other support is there? Right. experience you have with your mobility and if you've had a guide dog before um, and that will depend it depends on your circumstances as well if you will do your first week or your first two weeks at at a center before going home yeah. or whether you'll do your training at home okay thank you so so karen do you want to take, take talk us through the, the support that people might have financially or pa special passes or things like oh, that? Yes, of course. Um, well, the main thing when you live in any of the London boroughs, um, you're, you're entitled to um, a number of travel concessions. Yeah. Um, the first one being the Freedom Pass, which allows you to travel on um, buses, trams, trains and the tubes um free in all of the london oh, great. Karen, so i have i have my freedom pass here i'm going to show yes. it to the members so people can see what it is uh so i'm going to come a bit closer to the camera there we go this is my freedom pass so people can see it yeah but what I, what I found is that on several occasions, because it's in my pocket, especially in winter, when I, take, when I go and get my gloves out, and my pass fell out of my pocket. So, oh, dear. And it, it is such a palaver to get a new one. So what I've done okay. is that I've put a little ribbon around it, and I have bells on it, so that if it falls on the floor, at least I can hear it jingle. <laughs> Yes, it's a bit peculiar, yes. but it works very well. So um, no. there we go. Bells That's my little trick for today. Yeah, bells can work well for a lot of things. Actually, my 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 mum in law has has those on her purse. So again, <laughs> if if anyone tries to take her purse, the the bells jingle. Um, she's very safety conscious that way. Yeah, but, but no. It, hassle because i'll tell you why on, on the back of your freedom pass it actually gives you the number to ring if you've lost your freedom pass but if, you, if you've lost it the number's on the back of it so it's always handy to maybe write it out on a separate piece of paper the second thing is that they do charge you if you lose it 10 yeah. times to renew it um, so it's to be aware of that, and it can take um, up to two to three weeks to get a new pass, and, and they will expect you to pay um, on the transport during that time. Yeah. Um, so so it, is a, it is a little bit of hassle when you lose it. Um, there are some restrictions as well um, on trains. Um, you could only use trains after 9.30. Yes. And in, it's only within the London area. It's at any time of weekends, but after 9.30 on, on weekdays. So that's something else to be, but, uh, to be aware of. But, but everything else from, is um, four or seven. Kevin, from West Croydon, you can use the overground because that's considered like the tube, isn't it? It is. So, so that's 24-7. Yes, yeah. yes. And what I have as well is that to, to try to go into London using the trains, I have an Oyster card and I ask them to link my Oyster card to my disabled rail pass so that when I yes. swipe it, it still gives me the discount of the disabled rail card. Yes, and, and, and that, that's the good thing about the Oyster card, you can do it, you can link it, link it to your Freedom Pass if you have to travel on the train before 9.30 yeah. on, on weekdays. It, it is fan, fantastic that way. Um, that, that's the brilliant thing now about, about technology, yes. really. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So um, we, you, you mentioned earlier as well when we were talking about guide dogs, you mentioned the taxi card. What is the taxi card? Okay. Well, with the taxi card, 
Um, again, this this is something that all the London boroughs provide. Now, you can only get a taxi card if you're registered severely sight impaired. Yes. And um, blind. You, that's the only time you will automatically qualify for a taxi card. Unfortunately, if you're registered sight impaired, partially sighted, mm. um, they won't provide one yeah. um, unless you have other physical mobility needs yeah. that um, prevents you from using from using other forms of transport. Yeah. Um, I- so the taxi card, what it does, it, it gives you a discount on black taxis Um for um, up to eight pounds ninety, um, it's it's the black taxis eight pounds ninety on the clock, um, and you pay the first two pounds fifty, and the local authority pay up to eight pounds ninety the remainder. And um, af- after that, though, the clock starts ticking, and you're responsible for the extra. Right. So, so it's it's really only good for short journeys. So you can't use several trips in one go? No, Um, they will only let you have one swipe. You have to break your journey in Croydon. Other local authorities let you have two swipes in Croydon. They only allow you one swipe. One. So you you can use it to, to get to, say, if you're going to Croydon Vision, and then when you were finished at Croydon Vision, you could use it to go home because yeah. that would be seen as two journeys. Okay, um, yeah. And, and you do only get a certain amount a year, uh, so you can't totally rely on it because um, you, you only get, um, you know, it's better just for one-off things right. uh, yeah. rather than having to rely on it, rely yeah. on it totally. So it's just an extra support, yeah. It is just an extra support. Some people think, you know, it works well for them. Other people, it doesn't work so well. Yeah. And I think it really depends where you live in the bar- borough yeah. and the availability. I suppose because if you have to pay the first £2.80, if your journey just costs you £2, then it's, it's no point. No, yeah. no. Yeah. Um, well, you won't get many taxes for that price. No. But to be fair, <laughs> A lot, of, a lot of people say that actually they don't use the taxi card anymore. Yeah. Um, getting, you know, using um, Uber or using a local tax. Um, so, so Uber, you would. So, Karen, you wouldn't be able to use your taxi card with Uber. No. No. It's no. only the black taxi card. Well, not strictly. They do have contracts with some of the private. Okay. Um, taxi companies, but they they always really look for a computer cab first. It's really if a computer cab yeah. isn't isn't um, available or it's in an area okay. where there isn't so many computer cabs. Okay, and then I think then the the next thing is is the um, dial a ride. So how does dial a ride work? What, what what is that? Okay. If, if you have a freedom pass, a disabled person's freedom pass, um, you qualify to apply for Dial-A-Ride. Um, and you, they, you can apply online or they do have an application form. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, again, an extra benefit where it's, a, it, it, it's funded by Transport for London, wow. um, where they have special buses, um, look a bit more like mini buses. They also have lifts within these buses where they can pick you up from your home free of charge and take you to where you need to go. Wow. But there is restrictions to that as well because they won't take you across borough they right. will only take you within your own borough. So, and so this is again, pati- it can be difficult to book. So this is particularly good if people have a, a, a wheelchair or a mobility scooper, because I suppose in those big minibuses, they, they have the space for that. Yes, it yeah. is. It is, you know, if you have other mobility needs, that's where the... Um, dial a ride where is really dial and support yeah. you and you can register independently for you just to travel or you can register for you and um a carer to travel oh but right i didn't know you could register for yeah yeah for but, two. but yeah but if you register for you and a carer you have to always travel with your carer yeah 
you can't just use it then independently um you always have to be with your carer right i suppose if you need somebody to push you or, or something like that there might be situations where in fact you wouldn't be able to even if you were in a wheelchair you wouldn't be independent yes you need a bit yes. of support um, and hmm. And one of the other restrictions is that it won't it won't um, take you to hospital. Ah, uh, yes. Um, so yeah. if, if you've got a hospital appointment, you can't use yeah. dial right to take you to your hospital appointment. Right. Um, um, because you may, you know, they, they say if you can't use transport, um, you should be um, receiving support through your um, local um, sort of... Uh, I suppose yeah. you're um, GP to, so, to get to hospital appointments. So, so if people have hospital appointments but have mobility issues, they can ask for transport um, support from the hospital. Yes. 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 And do you know if that transport? How how about taking a guide dog in a hospital or at a GP? How do do, do they let you do that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Of course they do. Yes. No, um, Ruby's been to hospital appointments, yeah, and to um, GP appointments. Oh, wow, okay, um, yeah, I quite, I quite regularly have appointments at the dental um clinic in the hospital up in Guy's, and yeah. Ruby goes with me and she lies She's... beside me while whilst I'm having yeah. my treatment. <laughs> oh, excellent, okay. Now, we, we're finding Karen that uh. People who are self-isolating, people who have sort of been at home for a long time during the lockdown, are feeling quite nervous about going out again. They're feeling that, oh, they might have forgotten their route or they haven't been out very much all by themselves. Yeah. Uh, what, what could we kind of do to support people? What, what could we... Okay, well, if, if it's a route that, um, you know, essential route that you used to use quite often and need to use again, yeah. certainly you can get in contact with the sensory impairment team, yeah. um, maybe to have a little bit of refresher training. Yeah, like um, a... At the moment, at the moment um, mobility is limited, the training during lockdown yeah. because of the COVID restrictions. Exactly. And at, and at the moment, if it is mobility training you need, we will only provide, um, you know, we assess whether we think that's... And it's, it's, it's just as much to keep you safe as it is um, to keep ourselves safe. No, absolutely. Uh, safe. What, I'm, uh, what so I've been, uh, Karen, what I've been recommending to yeah. people is to, well, why don't so they... Go out your front door, take a few steps and come back in. And then next time, go a bit further. Then next time, Sorry. go to the end of your street, come back. Don't wait till the end of lockdown to really come out, so to speak. Um, maybe no, go around I, the block. I, I would say try and keep your, yeah, keep your cane skills up. Try and go out for that exercise. Yeah. And, you know, make sure that, yeah, even if it's just around the block, um, but make sure you know you keep your kids skills um, and your confidence. Your confidence, confidence up. yeah. I have still been traveling. Yeah, I've still been traveling during lockdown because um, I've had to go to work and things. Yeah. Um, I can honestly say I've I've had positive experiences um, from both you know from um, the general public. Yes. From from shop assistants and um, also from TFL staff. Um, I... Yeah, uh, and how did you find? How did you find like going shopping? Because I found like going in a queue. Because then the whole shop, the whole queues, their barriers, their queues. I mean, I couldn't really Green. see the barriers where Green. people were. <laughs> yeah. Now, at at the moment, they have suspended because the other thing you can get. If you're traveling in public transport um, with the trains and tubes, you can get assistance at the stations. Yeah. And um, with that, they have suspended it at uh, at present because obviously they have to look at the health and safety That's it, of yes. the staff. Um, 
but the, I have been told that is to um, start again on January the 26th. Oh, where right. You can get, again, assistance so, at, at, at stations. Okay. At stations. So we could put that on our newsletter that the, the, the assistant in, in, in yeah. sort of in stations should start again on the 26th of January. Oh, that's really good news. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and Karen, and I, was I was kind of. Outside. Yeah. And the other thing is as well, I was just going to say about if you've lost your confidence in traveling, yeah. TFL also offer travel training support. Ah. And they can also offer that during lockdown. So if you are doing essential route using TFL transport, yeah. such as the train or tube, um, they can give you support where they can take you through that route. Does so that does it, that include it, buses? I'm not. Too, I think they will include buses. Okay, um, but don't don't quote me on that. No. One. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Certainly trains and and tubes. Um, but I do think no, they do buses as well. No, they do buses okay. as well. So they'll do um, your your train, they, your they, bus, they your tram. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Excellent. So so they. They will, you know, if it's just a route that you've been using regularly and then you've stopped using it and yeah. you just want a bit of support, you can get support from TFL as well. Oh, that is really excellent to know. Thank you, Karen. Well, I think I think we've come to to the to the end of our session, and and thank you, Karen, so much for coming on our Facebook Live and talking to us about mobility and, and traveling. It's it's really useful to know, and I think that when the lockdown will will stop, everybody's going to be rushing out again. So it's really good to know what's out there, what support we have, and and how we can. Um, help ourselves keep our confidence as well keep keep going out keep, keep sort of uh, trying and do bits of your route to, yes. to keep going i think that's the the main thing and uh, thank you uh, viewers for your yeah. comments your questions hola do we have any other questions or comments from um, just uh, one uh, saying are you able to describe your freedom pass oh am i able to describe my freedom pass okay so my freedom pass uh uh is here my freedom pass has my photo on it uh it's got a number uh it's got an orange bar on the left hand side and that and it's got other stuff that i can't see <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard plastic card so it looks like a credit card um, and I have it in, in this sort of purple plastic wallet um, and that's about all I can say I know that people have been worried about the difference between a disabled freedom pass and an old person's pass and, and Karen what what do you know the differences? Are there any difference well, of between an no, old person's no. pass and a freedom pass? No, there shouldn't be. Now, during lockdown, they did give restrictions on older people's freedom passes. And that was to try and discourage older people traveling at peak times to, um, you know, to support with... Um, yeah basically the COVID restrictions. Yeah. Um, now, Croydon have, for some reason, when disabled people have reached the age of 65, reissued them with a disabled person, um, I mean, an uh, older person's freedom pass rather than a younger person's, uh, or rather than a disabled person's freedom pass. And um, so it has caused some people with sight loss who are over the age of 65 some problems yeah um now, to be fair i don't know if those restrictions have have been lifted i haven't checked for for a while and um, 
I think the other thing that is that people use their disabled freedom pass as a proof of disability. So when they go to museums or to Kew Gardens or, yeah. or different places, it is for them it's like a, a disabled, if you want, a, a proof of disability. Do you know if people can actually uh, say, well, no, I don't want an old person's freedom pass, I actually want to disable freedom pass? Is it something... Um, People can so, ask I'm, for. I'm, I, I, there's no harm in asking. I think the more people who ask, the more yeah. likely it is to change. Okay. I'm not too sure. I have put people through who they said they will change it. Yeah. And then um, I think it got to a point where they, they stopped doing it because there was too much to demand. And obviously they'd already purchased the over 65. Right. Um, pass but um freedom pass but i think the more you know the more people who complain and the more people that the ask will then the more likely well, it is that they will refuse yeah. their actions well it, if it's something that people are very uh, uh, keen about it's definitely something croydon vision can campaign on and, and try and influence because yes, uh, I think so. We we don't want to go around with ten thousand different cars. <laughs> if we no. can use just one, it kind of makes sense as yeah. well. Yeah. No. No. To be fair, though, a lot of a lot of organisations also um, you do have to um, register beforehand that you have a disability, and sometimes they ask for proof if you're receiving things like PIP or, yes. or DLA. Um, so I, I think it's always good to check where it is you're going and where you're trying to get a concession. Yes. Because even just showing a freedom pass um, may not allow you to have a concession. No, Sometimes you yeah. have to pre-register. Yeah, I on think to it's... That, on to that uh, point, um, we have someone saying his freedom pass is blue. Uh, the, uh, it used to be orange, but it, it's not anymore. It applies after 65. Yes, and yes. And then the, Glenn's asking, is there someone you contact when you lose your Freedom Pass? Uh, is it Freedom Pass, TFL, or your local SIT? It, it's, no, it's not the local SIT. We, we, we have nothing to do with, with the Freedom Pass. Um, um, it's travel services, but it's TFL. If you if you've already been issued and meet the criteria for a freedom pass, if you lose your freedom pass, it's it's TFL that you contact, and the number is on the back of your freedom pass, which I say doesn't help if you lose it. But if you Google it, it also comes up, um, and it's TFL you contact. Yeah. So so. If anybody loses their freedom pass contact Croydon Vision and we'll give you the number to, to, to phone and we'll, we'll support you okay is that it or now have we got all oh, yeah. the rest is just uh, some questions is... that other people are just answering okay like, fantastic well, does Croydon Council issue you another freedom pass if the one you got is about to expire yeah no 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 freedom passes uh, is viewers freedom passes TFL so it's not Croydon Council, it's TFL. Okay, well, unless I think it, we've uh, we've uh, come to the end. Yeah, we had a lovely goes, chat. It has expired. Thank unless you. It has expired, and you need you need to to apply for a new one. So you need to apply for a new one. Yeah. So. Yeah. So if if for instance it's out of date. Um, and you haven't used it for a while, that would have been cancelled. So you have to start the process again where you can, you, you apply to travel service for a freedom pass and then obviously they will look for your proof that, that you have right. a disability. So the travel so, service. Know, if if right. you last... Yes, travel service, yes. Okay, excellent. So um, it's travel service. Yeah, I have, um, I have, um, I have, yes, I have their contact. I've been in contact with them. So we have their contact. So for to renew your Freedom Pass is the travel service, the Croydon travel service. And then, yeah, fantastic. Yes. Wow, what a, what a lot of information, Karen. It's really good. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up because yes, uh, we've we've gone over the time, but it's been so interesting, so informative. 
And so thank you, Karen, for coming and, and sharing and giving us all this information. And uh, viewers, uh, hopefully you'll be with us next week. Next week, we're going to have uh, Vanessa, who's going to talk about um, talking therapies, what counselling can do. And it's be all about well-being, about keeping well, about good tips to help us stay well in this uh, strange and unusual times and to help us survive the, the lockdown. So please join us next week and uh, bye bye for today. So bye bye everybody.